Hi everyone, this is Connie. I'm going to be sharing today with you how I created the spatula holder, the little sleeve, uh, and also showing you a bit about how I use printing cut the Cricut Design Space to do that. So, first of all, you would need to extract the design you're using. I'm using one from Polka Doodles, and it's the Holly Gingerbread. So from Cricut Design Space, you're going to click on Upload Image, and you're going to find where that file is saved, right here. And I'm going to click on Complex and click Continue. Since mine is a PNG file, it's going to come in with the black and white, excuse me, the gray and white checkered background, because you don't have to clean up any backgrounds. If you have a JPEG file, it's going to be white and you're going to have to either remove the background this way or erase and then you start clicking until you get nothing um, and I'll try to show you that if I can remember at the end here but you want to preview your cut image and I say that because there are a few little specks right that little speck right there this one here this one and I think one of those you want to take out so I'm going to click on erase I get my little eraser which you can make larger or you can make smaller and I don't want it that small so we're good here and I'm going to get rid of this one I have tried multiple times I don't know what that little speck is there so anyway now I'm good uh, I'm going to click on apply and continue Click on print and cut image and upload. And here it is. I'm going to bring it into Design Space. I'm going to click on it and add to canvas. It comes in quite large. I'm going to leave it that way for right now. I'm going to create the offset for it first. And I let it do this part first. So you see it's quite large, that blue line around there. I want it to come down to. 056. If I can get it with sometimes I have a struggle for that. That right there. Okay. And then you see it got quite a bit smaller, correct? Let's just look through here. Okay. Now, if you want this area in here taken out, and if you want that up, I'm going to change the background when I can cut the gray. If you don't want that all to cut out, all you have to do is move this over, click on this, change it up here to a basic cut, click on contour, and then I click on hide all contours so you can keep the background. I am going to do that as mine because for the size I'm working with, it is going to be so incredibly tiny, I just want that area there. You'll barely see it. I'm going to grab it all. I'm going to click on a line, center, come over here and flatten, or attach, excuse me, and then flatten. So now it's going to print it as one image, one piece. The gray will be part of the image. And then it will cut that out and it will not cut out that gray center. It just cuts nicer and it just, it'll work a lot better, honestly. You don't have to do that, but that's the way I like to do it. I'm going to leave this large for a moment and I'm going to bring in my image uh, to be the shape that it's going to go on and we'll go from there. So I'm using this heart in design space. You can use anything you want for shape. You can use a die, whatever you want. The heart I cut at 2.829 and 2.5 it. I'm going to change it to white so I get my color straight. And then I want to do an offset and this will be at 0 0.069. Okay. I'm going to apply and I want my dark green. I'm going to try to keep things straight. Okay. Now I want to bring in my text so I can get my image resized. So I'm going to come over 
here to do my text. Okay. So I'm going to get to the style to the ready. The style I need is the ready. I'm going to resize that so I can get it on the list. Let me make this a little bigger so we can maybe see better what I'm doing. And I just bring it to the front. And I just, you know, figure out. I think I'm going to move my big to the front just a little bit. Detach it. Again. And this piece here, from what I cut it, is 2.125. Went back and did that strong and measured it. Okay, add the front. And that's what it will look like. And I'll show you how I put it all together at the end of the video. But that's that's all I do. I use um, a border from little scraps of heaven designs. I brought that in and cut that. And then if you want to put a bow or anything on, you can use a die or I used a 3D both from little scraps of heaven designs. But I am going to upload another image that is not a PNG and if you're not going to uh, print and cut very much, you'll see, I'm just looking I thought I had some images in here that I don't uh, do. Well, I will use this one because this one is a JPEG. Okay, it's a different type of image, but you'll still see when it comes in. This is the happened with the JPEG. You see, it's got a white background, right? Okay. Remove background is an automatic feature with with um, access. So I'm going to show you how you can do it that way if you have access. You just click on Remove Background. It takes a bit because there's a lot of images to work around. And see, you have the gray and white check, and that's that's what you want. Don't worry about this other stuff. That's not what I'm. That's a whole different thing I can show you, but not today. But anyway, I'm going to go back to Revert. If you don't have the Remove Background, if you collect that. Click on select and just click here. It'll do it this way and it preserves all of your images. And then you would just um, click on erase if you've got anything extra in there. I would suggest always doing your preview of the cut files to make sure you don't need to clean anything up, which in this case you wouldn't. But so just you'd click on. So again, if you don't have the remove background option, click on select. Just click on the areas you want to click. Uh, and like here, you've got this little spot if you want to get rid of that. You can here. Uh, in the case on mine where I had, I'm just going to go back here. But I'm going to make this bigger. In the case where you have this gray area here, I'm going to do this. Uh, 
right in here. And you have this white and stuff. It's just for you to take like a bit. You could take this out, otherwise it would be white on your neck. When you brought it in. You can take it out if you want. But yeah, very simple to do. And then when I click on make it, I don't know why this is coming in here. Oh, well, I did a tattoo again. That's what it's doing for me. I'm sorry. Let's go back to that. I can't see if it's got the... Yeah, it did. Okay. I could not see the... Uh, I don't want to say the gray on it, the offset. Okay, so when you click on this, if, if you want to make more images, obviously to fill up the tape you can. But what I do, I'm not going to print it, so I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I click on send the printer. I leave the bleed off because I put the offset on there. I use my system dialog. I click on print. And then I click on um, whatever paper I took an essay change, but I usually use floating okay, and then press quality. And then I print. So that's how I get it ready to print. That is how I do things in design space. And then I will come back and I'll be back in a moment and I'll show you how I put everything together. So just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this now. Uh, what we'll be doing is scoring this. So I'm going to turn this at a bit of an angle. So you can see this. But I've got my piece cut at... Ugh, made a mess. I always make a mess. Luckily this won't show too much on the inside, but... Ah, goodness. I don't know how I managed to get ink everywhere, but um, I'm going to score it at one half inch. I can't score very well sideways, so, and I have to have it, let's see, turn this around. I think some days I need a small size scoreboard for where I work, and I don't usually score large things, but I'm going to move the camera a bit, I warned you. I'm going to score from this side. It's, uh, let's see. No, I want to score this side. I want it to go to the back, so. Okay. Scored at one half inch and three inches. So again, one half and three. The way and again I'm going to move the camera a little bit so uh, okay can work better here I'm gonna go ahead and score this and oh I need to bring the scoreboard back in one more time oh geez I have my border somewhere uh, seem to lose pieces faster than you can imagine. Okay. This piece is cut at five and one eighth. So I'm going to get in scored at a half. I'm going to score it at three inches. I'm going to cut it off at one eighth of an inch on my trimmer, I, but I want to wait. I want to just see when I score these. I need to come back in with my ink. I I ink everything, so if you're wondering why, that's uh, why. That's why I have ink everywhere too, right? Make 
sure my hands are somewhat clean. I marked the top, so I just was looking at this. Um, okay, let me look at here a minute. Oh, shucks. Did that wrong. Uh, don't screw this. If, please, I, I'm sorry. I really messed that up. You're going to want to just have it trimmed at an eighth of an inch. Oh, goodness. I'm going to trim it off one eighth of an inch. And then I'll come back and ink the edge here. So again, if you're going to do anything scoring, cut this at five inches. I had you cut it at five and one eighth, but just cut it at five. No big deal to cut that eighth of an inch off. And then score it at two and one half. So it's scored in the middle, okay? Because then it will just fit right on here up to this half inch score line. So I'm going to use score tape to put this on. If I can figure out where the beginning of my score tape is. my uh, tweezers that I normally use is holding my bow together here. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm going to attempt to get this somewhat straight on here. I could use the grid here, but yeah, no. I knew I was looking for something. I'm using a decorative scissors. You can leave the top plane uh, on the other one, on this one. I used a pinking shear, whatever you wish to use. I'm going to line up the edge of my scissors here with the top of the paper and then attempt to line this up again. I'm not sure why I use these scissors. Sometimes I have a bit of a struggle, so I don't have very many left. I don't know what I did with all of them, but you yeah, know, I probably gave them away when I got rid of a lot of stuff. So who knows? Okay, this is what it looks like. And then all you're going to do is, since I didn't really score this uh, bottom piece to that, you're going to put tape or glue here. I think I'm going to just use some tape. It's faster for the video. I want to get it, the tape close to the inside score line, but not over. If I can see where that's at. Way down and wait. I forgot to tell you that the tape, no, excuse me, the paper I used for this, uh, I just printed a six inch square, but it is part of the Holly Gingerbread from Polka Doodle. This the bottom piece is not, no, nor is the bow. I don't know. The bow, I think, is from Knitwit Collections. The bottom piece is something I had actually in my Valentine's kit. So, okay. Bring this in. Roll this. I'm going to match up 
more my bottom, okay? Not my top, more my bottom. And I don't work very well with score tape, so doing the best I can there. I'm gonna have to trim just a little bit of the uh, border piece off here. Without trimming off the paper, let's see what's going on here. Didn't have it lined up 100%. It's still showing a little bit. Hmm. Well, that's just what I want. There, just. Okay. Now what I did, I did cut these two pieces out. I used a Swiss dots file for this, popped it up on tape, glittered, uh, this is just glitter card stock from Cricut, and I did ink the edges because the other one I didn't, I don't know why, but I'm used to inking all my edges. So I'll glue these two together. I don't have a spatula out. I, I know I shared in my other video how it went together, so um, I'm just showing you how I put this together quick. Uh, Get some more glue on there. Going on glitter cardstock, it's going to have to be quite a bit of glue. Learn from experience. Okay. My inky fingers. This has popped up also. Let's get some glue on this. You can decorate it however you wish. I'm just showing, obviously, duh. I'm just showing you how I do it. And I put this down further toward the bottom of the scallop because I have to have room for my bow. I should have probably um, cut this top piece a little bit. Not quite so far down, but it's all good. This has popped up. I was watching a card video, I think it was, no, it was on a tag, or a Christmas ornament, I don't remember, but it was not a card, excuse me, but um, the lady used a print and cut image, she laminated just one side of the image, and then she put it on her ornament, I thought, oh, that's interesting, I've never thought about that, it's a cool idea, okay, Oh, there. Oh, no, that's not it. I cut the centerpiece out of my bow, and like everything, it disappeared. I'm not hunting it down, so I'll put a little gem in the middle of mine. But I'm just going to put that on. Maybe. Trying to center it somewhat. Again, this bow is from Little Scraps of Heaven Designs. I cut it with my Cricut. There are any number of images you can use. Uh, I just size my image to fit when I'm in design space I just size it to fit on my uh, heart or whatever piece I'm putting on front or if you're not using any kind of like heart or any um, shape then you can just size it to put right on the back onto the onto this spatula sleeve itself and I want to make sure that I didn't glue these two together with my bow which be my luck. I'm, I'm that coordinated. Anyway, that is my finished 
piece other than like I said I want to put uh, I don't have them out right now but I'll put something in the middle here and you could put stickles on if you want whatever you wish to do but I want to thank you for joining me if you have any questions be sure and leave a comment I'll get back to you thank you have a great day